<laughs> get a load of this one. Somebody asked me to give you a boot. People think you're such a good little snake, Cleo. Here's another one that says that you're a beautiful snake. And um, another one that says that they love your mustache. People just really like you, Cleo. Oh, <laughs> here's a goofy one. Get a load of this. Some guy says, Last time I saw someone handling a snake at a show, he said the same thing you just said. Oh yeah, she's easygoing. The guy proceeds to put the snake around his neck. The snake choked him out and killed him. If you think that they're easy going, have fun, bud. Sassy micro hamster. <clears throat> I, uh, I presume that's what SMH stands for. <laughs> like that could happen. Not likely. All right, I'm just gonna hit send with the confidence of knowing that no way is this foreshadowing what this video is about to be about. Here on NBC Chan, we're learning new information about a man from the Lehigh Valley who was killed by his own pet snake. It is described as something out of a horror film. A man is attacked by his pet snake. Wow, so I guess this actually happened. Not the story about somebody being at a reptile show and it happening to uh, presumably a breeder or something like that. But earlier this week, a man named Elliot Sensman was pronounced dead after being killed by his pet snake. So we're gonna look into this, but before even getting into this, I've got to address just how exceedingly rare this is. The Humane Society actually keeps some of the best numbers I've seen on this. And according to them, between 1978 and 2013, only 17 people were killed by non-venomous pet constrictors. And if you're watching this, and you were like, 17 people dying over 35 years is still a lot when it's dying from a pet constrictor? Ah! Fine, fair enough. But as a comparison, dogs kill around 16 people every year in the U.S. <coughs> anyway, with that context, let's get back to looking at exactly what happened. Pennsylvania man is recovering after police say they were forced to kill his pet snake that was strangling him. Cleo doesn't like this story anymore. She's... She's starting to hide behind me. She's not interested. 28-year-old male with a snake wrapped around his neck. Neighbors say the man had many pet snakes, including this one. So police did find multiple snakes in the house, but this in no way means that multiple snakes were involved in this happening. Just like if people have one dog, it's not too uncommon for them to have a second dog. Snakes are kind of the same way. People get interested, they get one, they get a second, they get a third, but you have to be real careful with going past three because in my experience, people have one, two, three, or 28 snakes. There's no in between. So more things that make this strangulation just incredibly weird is Elliot wasn't some guy who just went and picked up a snake on Craigslist and threw it in a trash can and called it his pet. This is somebody who had been keeping snakes since he was 10 years old, according to interviews with friends, and he had been taking in rescue snakes in need for the last six years. So in theory, he knew what he was doing, and he knew that anytime you're holding a snake much larger than six, seven feet, maybe even smaller if you're a smaller person, you shouldn't be alone. Any snake that's much bigger than six or seven feet has the potential, especially if you are a smaller individual, to wrap itself around your neck or other areas of your body that can cause issues issues and you really just shouldn't handle them alone. Sensman's family has been quoted as saying Elliot Sensman often urged caution when housing such animals and took in snakes that had been abused and neglected. It was one of those snakes, police say, took the 27-year-old's life. That's hard to hear. Um, I'm, I'm 26, I'm turning 27 this year. I've spent the last seven years working for a zoo that took in unwanted and neglected reptiles, so I, I it's hard for me not to see a little bit of myself in the story and hearing about it and it's just really sad to know that this snake that likely ended his life was also a rescue that he was trying to help out. And real quick aside before we continue learning more, I just want to mention now that there is going to be a link down in the description to a GoFundMe started by the family of Elliot Sensman. That is the name of the man who was killed by his pet snake that now we are finding out was a rescue. And if you'd like to help out Elliot's family and friends, that link is going to be down in the description, so please check it out if you're able to do so. So what happened? Well, just because somebody knows all the rules and knows how to do something the right way, doesn't mean that they do it the right way every single time and that's where they'll get you. <laughs> I was a venomous snake keeper for seven years and I am proud to say that I was never bitten by a venomous snake during that time. I've been working with rattlesnakes even longer than that and I've never been bitten by a rattlesnake either. No matter what animal it is, there are very safe ways to interact and work around them professionally. And most of the time, if you follow all the safety rules, if you do everything right, you'll be safe. You won't get hurt. But the one time you cut corners, the one time you say, oh, he's on the other side of the cage, I'm just gonna 
of reach in or I'm gonna just spot clean something. The one time where you break protocol and whether it's a big snake and you don't have other people around to help you if things go wrong or it's a venomous snake and you don't have somebody to drive you to the hospital if things go wrong, that's just gonna be the time that things go wrong because you don't have someone there. And that's why it's so important no matter what type of wild animal you're working with, you set protocols for how you are going to safely keep that animal, whether it's an escape protocol, a safe handling protocol, you make up those protocols and you stick to them every single time because it's the one time that you don't when something tragic like this can happen. They see the male, the victim, lying on the floor. He's unresponsive. They observe a very large snake which has the midsection of the snake wrapped around the throat. So that's interesting. According to the police officers who showed up on scene, the snake wasn't biting Elliot when they found him, but the midsection of the snake was wrapped around him. The fact that the snake wasn't biting him makes this seem like it wasn't a defensive or aggressive behavior. I often draw the distinction between defensive actions and aggressive actions, and most of what you see in snakes is them being defensive because they're freaked out, and that's when they get scared and bite out of just defense. <laughs> But the fact that it was the middle of the snake wrapped around the guy and there's no mention of him having a bite from the snake makes me think that it was something much more casual, like he was just holding the snake. A man is attacked by his pet snake. But the important thing to notice here is the fact that there isn't a bite from the snake tells me that this wasn't an aggressive or a defensive thing. It might have been him holding the snake and it just accidentally getting wrapped around his neck and trying to hold on. It's just they have no arms and legs. They have no way to kind of like hold on except for their bodies. And, and if you're not a snake person, you might be like, trying to hold on to my neck, that's strangling me. Again, fair enough. But if you think about it from their perspective, you can kind of see how she's leaning on my head right now with just a coil of her body. And that's because not that she's trying to throw that coil around my neck or strangle me, but she doesn't have arms or legs to hold herself up with. So they kind of have to maneuver their body and they don't know that our neck is important to us continuing to be alive so occasionally big snakes will start wrapping around your shoulders and if you're not really careful or you don't have people around you they can accidentally wrap around your neck pretty quickly and when that starts to happen you're probably going to start panicking and moving around more and that's going to make them feel less secure and they're going to start grabbing on even tighter and tighter and tighter and that's how you can end up with a situation where a pet snake that is not being defensive is not being aggressive ends up causing a serious safety risk because it's just trying to hold on for dear life but it's holding on for dear life to your neck. Speaking of which, how you doing up there, Cleo? In his McCungy Township home, where a family member found him unconscious and in cardiac arrest Wednesday with a 15-foot snake on top of him. Quite literally, the officer looked into the room and the snake was looking up at him. Well, I mean, yeah, they don't have arms or legs. They, they live on the ground. They're, they're kind of looking up to everybody. Officers say the snake's head was just far enough away where they could shoot it. The officers had to make a life or death decision. So they took the shot. That's that's hard to hear. So I guess once the snake's head presumably was far enough away from the body, it doesn't sound like it was ever biting him. So it wasn't an aggression or a defensive thing. So it was likely just moving away from the person. These cops who don't understand snake body language got thrown into this situation and it's tragic and heartbreaking but it's fairly understandable that they just walked into something that looks like a scene from snakes on a plane and without the proper training and understanding of snakes and their body language it's heartbreaking that they had to shoot the snake but given the circumstances of seeing a guy unconscious with a snake on him it's fairly understandable why cops did what they did what i think is a little confusing is why police officers were the ones dispatched and if this actually was dispatched to them as just a man suffering from cardiac arrest who dropped the ball? <laughs> Some of the news articles I read about this say that the grandma called the dispatchers. And so I don't know if it was 911 that said just a man having cardiac arrest. I don't know if she left out the fact that there was a snake involved, but I'm really shocked that just police showed up to this and there weren't any sort of animal control experts on hand. And of course, if that was the only tool they had to handle the situation and this is how they felt they were gonna save Elliot's life, it's a completely understandable decision that they made once they were in this circumstance snake released its grip, slithering away, eventually dying. Yep, the snake slithered away and eventually died after that. Chances are it was already slithering away, but it's too late now. It happened. But what's really interesting here is that Elliot is still alive by the sounds of it. It doesn't sound like he was conscious, but they were able to drag him away from the snake and get him to a hospital. Where'd Cleo go? 
I don't feel her pushing on my head anymore. Oh, there she is. She found the chair. <laughs> oh, it's gotta be bad for my posture. I got a snake doing this on me. <laughs> Officers now being praised for their quick thinking. We're praising their quick thinking? How much quick thinking does it take to pull out a gun? One of the officers described it as a scene from a horror movie, and that's that's probably the most appropriate way to describe it. That's that's fair enough, saying that it was a scene from a horror movie. But we're praising their quick thinking? Again, I'm not I'm not blaming the officers for how this turned out, and like I said, this this to an untrained person is like walking into a horror movie. But I feel like praising them for their quick thinking is going a little too far. The man was alive when he was rushed to the hospital where he was still recovering as of yesterday. It's not clear what type of snake it was or why it turned on its owner. So with more interviews after the fact, we now know that it was about an 18 foot long reticulated python that had strangled Elliot Sensman. And he did survive the trip to the hospital and he seemed to be recovering, at least as far as the details that were released to the public convey. So something to point out immediately are all the reports talking about a 15 foot and an 18 foot boa constrictor that killed Elliot Sensman. This absolutely did not happen. And that's because a boa constrictor is the same species as Cleo back here, her head's right over there. but. Boa constrictors, the absolute biggest true red tail boas have been recorded only around 11 and 12 feet long. And most boa constrictors, like Cleo here, are true red tail boas. She's a boa constrictor and purator, and even the females that get larger than the males rarely get larger than nine feet. So all of the initial reports saying that it was a boa constrictor are absolutely wrong. But this does seem like one of the rare cases where the snake actually turned out to be bigger than the initial reports. Initially, they were reporting that this was a 15 foot long boa constrictor. Again, not possibly a boa constrictor, but it turns out it was actually an 18 foot long snake, which makes sense that you wouldn't have a, a full accurate measurement of a snake that big until after it was deceased because snakes that big usually aren't easy to get to lay out. So what type of snake did it? Well, from reading all of the interviews that I was able to get my hands on, it sounds like it was a reticulated python, which makes much more sense for the size of the snake. Reticulated pythons can and will reach lengths of 18 feet, so that sounds much more accurate. This was most likely a reticulated python, I believe that. But this is still another non-venomous species. It is a constrictor, and deaths from this species are incredibly rare. Again, 17 deaths over 35 years from constrictors in the US. Not something that happens often at all, as I as I nervously side-eye my boa constrictor over here. <laughs> One of the things that's important to consider with any news story is just how quickly details, especially details that are released right after an event happens, can change, and how often news sources get things wrong in the race to get things out faster and faster. But because those details can differ from news report to news report as details are coming out, things like that start contributing to urban legend. Now, this is one of the rare cases where the snake was actually bigger than it was said to be in the initial report, but nine times out of 10, the snake is always smaller when they actually find out how big it is. This is the outlier in more ways than one, unfortunately. But other things like quotes directly from the police officers can start to confuse the situation and build the mythology around cases like this. Like this quote from Lieutenant Peter Nickisher, who was the officer who actually shot the snake, who said, and I quote, was face to face with the snake and shot it when the head was away from the body. Now, I don't think the lieutenant was lying here, but he is a human. He is a human who doesn't know about snake body language and was probably one of the people who said that it was like walking into a horror movie. So even though when I hear and other people from the general public here that somebody was face to face with a snake, they might picture something like this. What actually went down is probably more like the line I made fun of earlier about the snake looking up at them. Well, yeah, it's on the ground, then all snakes have to look up at you. But it already starts to create a different story that caters to images of snakes on a plane and other horror movies that we've seen about snakes. So that's how the news and kind of society at large ends up remembering the situation, even though in actuality, for some reason, police and not animal control were dispatched to a snake call, not a cardiac arrest call, a snake call that turned into a cardiac arrest call, but still, you want animal experts responding to animal situations. And the way that it played out, we have no reason to believe that the snake was ever acting aggressively. And some of these things are small distinctions, but they're important distinctions, but it really is how myths get started, where you have one case of something incredibly rare that does happen, but then thanks to rushed reporting, half-remembered details, and exaggerations from people that were there, actual events and recollections of what happened began to shift, we're left with a less clear view of the reality of the, the nature of snakes and the reality of what having a pet snake, or in this case, a big pet snake is. So I've gotta be honest with you, when I first saw this story, I, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to talk about it on my YouTube channel. While I feel it's something that's important to talk about for people to know about, 
I felt uncomfortable with the fact that somebody, a fellow reptile lover, actually died and lost their life here and I didn't want to be seen as being too cavalier about this whole situation or not taking it seriously. But then my little sister texted me the headline of what had happened and I realized regardless of if I talk about this, there are going to be people talking about this instance, creating their narratives about what happened and about who was at fault and if the snake was evil. Coming to kill me! If the snake meant to do it or what Elliot's intentions were. So I thought maybe I would try to lend my two cents to the situation and give a little bit more context to what might have happened. And while reading as many articles about the situation as possible. I found some interviews with Elliot Sensman's mother and friends that I used earlier in the video when I mentioned that Elliot's mother and family knew that he was an experienced snake keeper and knew that he shouldn't be handling these snakes alone. It was really after reading some of the interviews with Elliot's mother and friends that I decided, you know what, I need to make this video. People are going to be talking about this event regardless and maybe at least one of the people talking about it should be somebody who shares Elliot's love and appreciation for reptiles. Hopefully it's received the right way and isn't just taken as ambulance chasing. That's not what I'm doing at all here or not what I'm trying to do at all here. And I've got to say, the more I learn about Elliot, the, the sadder this case gets. His mother described him as being an eccentric and fun, unique, brilliant person. Everything he did was for other people, even the damn snakes. He was rescuing them from people who couldn't take care of them. Like I said, it's real close to home. He spent the last six years of his life rescuing these snakes. I've spent the last seven years of my life pretty much doing the same thing. And his friend Jeremy Griffin described him as being misunderstood genius, said that some of his thoughts were visionary and just were things that nobody else would have come up with. Jeremy Griffin also said eccentric is the word that comes to mind. Some may even say a weirdo. He was a kind of hippie type too, if you had a modern day hippie. His mother then went on to say he was working so hard he didn't want to profit off anything. His life was in devotion to everybody. That's why I made this video. His friend describing him as a bit of an eccentric weirdo or modern day hippie if such a thing exists um, hit a little too close to home and I thought maybe if anybody should be talking about this and trying to add more context to the situation maybe it should be me. So I hope that is what I have done for you here. I hope I have helped to kind of drag this a little bit away from the news media sensationalism of the event. A man is attacked by his pet snake. And helped to bring this horrible tragedy a little bit more back down to earth to tease out what exactly happened and more importantly what can be done to prevent this sort of thing from ever happening again. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope it helped shed a little bit of light on this horrible situation. No, in all likelihood, Elliot Snake did not attack him. No, he wasn't some irresponsible yahoo with a snake that was too big for him. This was a rare freak accident that should serve as a reminder for anybody who keeps large constrictors that at the end of the day, these are still wild animals. And at a certain size, it doesn't matter how friendly your snake is. If they start holding on to you in a way that you can't unravel, things can end up very badly, very fast. And that's why you should never handle a snake much larger than six or seven feet without someone else around to help you in case of emergency. Anyway, I will be back next Monday with another herpin video. We've had some more monsoon rain, so I'm getting out and doing a lot of herpin right now. So if you made it this far in the video and you aren't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss that video. And you should probably hit the notification bell too because YouTube hasn't really been letting people know when I publish new videos lately. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week, that you have the proper number of teammates for moving any large constrictors around, and most of all, that wherever Elliot Sensman is today, that he's out there still herping. <laughs>